Hey, it's Chris, and lately I've been in the mood to kind of switch things up here on the channel a little bit, do something different, which means I came with the idea of just trying out some challenges. So it seemed like a 48 hour challenge without a phone, no iPhone whatsoever, would be a great starting place. So what I'm gonna do is tell you what those two days were like, what happened, and then at the end, I'm gonna hit you with the big takeaway, the big lesson learned, which I think is pretty interesting. And you know what, if you like this, I could see this maybe becoming like a weekly thing. So what I want you to do is go down into the comments and leave me some ideas for Apple or tech related 48 hour challenges that you might wanna see here on the channel. Before we get into day one, I just have to tell you how I prepared for this because I knew the first thing in the morning, I would reach over to my nightstand and pick up my phone and this would all be over right away. So what I did was I quit charging that in my room, stuck it in another room, and I also stuck some sticky notes around, put it on my phone, put it on my computer, no phone, so that I would not pick this thing up. That was number one. Number two, I knew that I would be relying heavily on my Apple Watch to get through these two days. So I wanna get that all set up to be as efficient and as much of a phone replacement as possible. So here's what I did. I loaded up this Siri watch face, of course, because that's my favorite. Then I tried to make an entertainment watch face so I wouldn't get bored. And on here, I loaded up complications for the Nano app, the Reddit app, Audible for audiobooks, music, radio, and podcasts. The last thing I did was also make a productivity watch face so that hopefully in a pinch, I could get a little bit of work done if I had to. So on there, I loaded up complications for messages, drafts for notes, and things for to-dos. Oh, one other thing before we get into describing the days and what happened, I just wanna say here was my expectations before getting into this. Number one, I expected something, I didn't know what, but something to come up that would totally derail this experiment because I'll tell you what, a couple weeks ago, I already tried this and I failed almost immediately because I picked a really bad time to do it. I was on a road trip and I had to have my in-car entertainment. I couldn't survive all these hours of driving without it. So I expected something like that to come up. Number two, I also expected it to be terrible not having a camera to record important things, photos and videos. So day one, my Apple Watch wakes me up with the alarm and I realize immediately this is a really bad time to have the Apple Watch beta software running because my Apple Watch was all frozen for several minutes, like half an hour or something. It took me forever to get it working again. Fortunately, I already had all my to-dos for basically the whole week loaded up in things and I could see that on my Apple Watch once I had it up and running. Unfortunately, since I was up so early, <laughs> my screen time downtime settings were preventing me from accessing all the important apps that I was planning on. I will say, fortunately, through the morning of day one, at least I had a new Draft Nitro to try out and kind of keep me perky. So, after I got some early morning work done, then it was time to get ready. Usually, when I'm getting ready, when I'm taking a shower, brushing my teeth, doing my hair, all that stuff, I like to listen to a podcast. Well, I couldn't do that off of my watch, so there was another thing already that I just couldn't do. Later on in the day, my Apple Watch beta bit me in the butt again when I realized, number one, it's just gonna be tricky, like capturing all the thoughts for this video, for this experiment, like the notes to remember to like relay to you guys. Anyways, because I'm just gonna have to dictate it or whatever, I'm gonna have some mistakes, whatever. I was gonna use drafts for that, but the dictation was failing on my Apple Watch because of my beta. I tried to dictate something and Siri failed, so I couldn't even make a note. Fast forward an hour or two and I'm trying to install something in my garage and I need to watch an instructional video on YouTube. Well, guess what? That's not happening on my Apple Watch. And then something really annoying happened. I was driving, probably to get a coffee, as you can imagine, and I realized no CarPlay. And that is a huge thing. That's what sunk me <laughs> in the last attempt, right? Not having any entertainment, no CarPlay, no podcasts, no maps, no music. So even though it's like a short trip, I mean, that's valuable time for me to either catch up on a podcast or absorb something with an audio book or just relax and listen to some music. And I couldn't do that. I'm probably sounding like a whiny little crybaby, like, oh, I didn't have this and that, all these nice little conveniences. Well, yeah, but I think this is an interesting point because we really are spoiled with our phones and all the things that we rely on them for. And can I just observe something? It's just speaking of cars and phones. While I was out driving, me and my wife, we looked over and there's like a phone zombie just zombieing out on her phone 
and not even looking up to see the road right next to us and she doesn't even realize that the traffic is moving in front of her and it's just like hey at least without my phone i don't even have the opportunity to be one of those phone zombies so get this around 2 p.m on day one my watch runs out of battery it's gone and that's either due to the beta possibly or due to the fact that I'm just using it so much more because I don't have my phone with me. What I decided to do was just charge it for the rest of the day and just be done. So I'm, I'm having no phone and no watch for the rest of this day from 2 p.m. onwards. And I will tell you like, I don't think having anxiety is the right way to describe it, but I felt like I was missing out on some stuff and I didn't know what it was and it didn't feel good. Like I felt very disconnected. And for the rest of the day, basically I'm using the iPad mini for things like texting and all the stuff that I would usually use my watch and my phone for. And so that's basically what became my replacement for my phone and watch while I was at the office in the studio. Well, it's morning, as you can tell, and I already know what to expect today, I feel like, which is too bad. But I already ran into one issue. First thing that kind of tripped me up this day was that I couldn't control my smart sprinkler from my watch, I had to have my phone. That was the thing that I had just installed the day before. And so it had been a really hot day and I couldn't water my grass, which needed a drink. Uh, it was just set on the schedule, so there's no custom watering. So you really need your phone to control a lot of your smart home stuff. Oh, well, I should clarify actually, because if you're not lazy, you can walk out into the garage and do it manually. But who wants to do that? It was on day two when I had an epiphany. I don't have my huge 10s Max in my pocket, which means I also don't have that huge battery case, which means I don't even have to wear a belt because usually it's trying to de-pants me. Later on, I happened to pop into Twitter on my Mac. And at this point, I realized, wow, there's a lot of notifications here. There's been a lot of stuff going on that I just was not aware of. And so I was sitting there sifting through that because I'm not sitting there getting pinged with notifications. The official Twitter app is gone off the Apple Watch, so I wasn't getting notified there. And without my phone, I just had no idea. So, you know, the out of sight, out of mind thing, that is like a real thing. It really is a major truism. And this got me wondering, what else am I missing out on? Whether it's another social network or just whatever. I didn't know, your mind starts inventing stuff. like. Dude, you're missing out on all kinds of stuff. So for the afternoon on day two, I was really stuck around my desk for most of the day. I had my Mac and I had my iPads. And so I didn't really miss my phone all that much on the afternoon of day two. But still, I found myself reaching for it several times out of habit because it turns out there are certain things where it's just easier or quicker or I don't know, it just makes the most sense to get your phone, even though you have these other devices around. Uh, let's get to the conclusion, because I think there's some interesting stuff that I learned, uh, and I recorded this elsewhere, so. So, reflecting back on this whole experience, I think I definitely learned a few things. The first thing I learned is, when you get your phone back, you're gonna have a ton of notifications. The worst part about this whole thing was just the not knowing stuff. Like, I didn't have Google, so I couldn't just figure out something that I didn't know right away. And I didn't know what DMs I was missing, and I was way less informed about the news, for instance. And those are just a few examples. And I knew that I was missing out on all that stuff. The best thing about this experiment is that I was a little bit less dependent on an external object. So maybe I was without a map and there was a possibility that I might get a little bit lost. Or if I was gonna check out a coffee shop or a restaurant, then maybe I wouldn't have a review. I wouldn't know what it was gonna be like before I went in, especially with my glitchy Apple Watch beta. I also realized a few things. Number one, I don't use 90% of the apps on my phone and I didn't even miss them. Number two, I realized that I didn't use my Apple Watch for entertainment stuff at all, like I thought I was going to. So setting up that watch face was totally pointless. But I did like knowing that it was at least there if I wanted it. Number three, I realized that it was a terrible time to have watchOS 6 beta installed because it was so glitchy, it kind of messed everything up. And the lesson is, don't install betas if you're not a developer. I know it's tempting, but don't do it. I definitely should have put watchOS 5 back on after the review. Number four, I realized that if there was one word I would use to describe having a phone, it would be convenience. Phones are convenient, like being able to press a button and something happens in your house. Like I was just talking about with smart sprinklers. Instead, without it, I've been having to do a lot of stuff manually. So while I'm obviously glad to have my phone back for obvious reasons, I'm kind of disappointed too because there was something liberating about not knowing everything. 
And actually, I think maybe in the future, I'll go on more of these phone fasts. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Let me know down in the comments what other tech challenges you might want me to try and report back on. Uh, don't forget you can follow at Daily Tech, spelled daily T-E-K-K on Instagram and Twitter. Check out our podcast and our other channels down in the links down below. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.